Hi everyone, Bex here with an informational um, and story on La Casa de Machado y Stewart. So the building is the first part of the residence um, was built about 1829 by Corporal Jose Manuel Machado. It is one of the five remaining adobe buildings in Old Town State Historic Park. Many of the adobe homes begin with two rooms, one a living space and the other for sleeping. As most adobe homes, additional rooms were added over time as the family grew in size. Some rooms may have been freestanding, others attached to the original adobe rooms. Jack Stewart, who was a carpenter by trade, probably added wood frame additions. Uh, the adobe walls of the original building were about three feet thick and it was roofed with tule thatch and topped with dried mud. The Stuarts whitewashed the adobe house about every six months. A tile roof was added much later. The room was further from the plaza at the center of town, but much closer to the San Diego River. In the early 1800s, the river was within 100 yards of the town before its diversion into false Spain. Descendants of Machado's con continued to live there until 1966, when the property was sold to the California State Parks and restored to its approximate 1830s appearance in 1968. It was restored as if built for an early family of slightly more than modest means to help reflect the different social and economic differences in the, in the community. The garden is planted to reflect a kitchen garden similar to what residents in San Diego might have had in the early years of its development. The garden was a source of vegetables fruits, herbs, and edible flowering plants. Herbs were used for both cooking and medicinal purposes. Uh, one descendant remembers the garden having rue, parsley, borage, and ganchalagua, sometimes called the dwarf Mexican marigold. Explorers of the Spanish Empire found that San Diego had a climate that was as mild as that of Southern Europe. Soon after their, their arrival, missionaries began planting many types of fruit trees from Europe. As the development grew, additional plants were imported. Grapes flourished and soon California was producing wine and brandy. The Machados had fig, pear, and pomegranate trees. Vegetables included corn, squash, peppers, tomatoes, and beans. So self-supporting was the family that the only staples the family needed to buy were sugar, flour, and New Orleans molasses. One of the most useful plants found in the garden is nopal, which is uh, the prickly pear cactus. Um, so these cactuses had many uses. The young leaves could be cooked as a vegetable. The juice could be added to adobe to harden the bricks. And the, de and the delicious fruit tunas could be eaten as is or made into jam. The leaves can be infested with a type of beetle called Cochinilla. I think I said that right. Um, the female beetles 
when crushed, yield a red stumped substance that was used as a dye called carmine. The Spanish held the source of the dye secret for years. It produced a major cash export for Mexico, second only to silver. The famous British red coat soldiers wore jackets dyed with this cochinian. Uh, look for white spots on the leaves that indicate the presence of cochineal or crimson scale. Uh, historically, there would have been a variety of outbuildings that would have housed horses, cattle, goats, pigs, and chickens. Typically, outside open air structures called ramadas provided shade for a variety of activities. Cooking facilities, including an orno, which is a beehive shaped oven, were also located outside the house. And the story is uh, this was the home of several large interrelated families who lived in early San Diego. The marriage of Rosa Maria Machado to Jack Stewart in 1845 combined California and New England customs, languages, and lifestyles. Oral histories of their descendants recorded in the 1960s and 1970s contain fascinating glimpses into the lives of ordinary California American people. Uh, stories are remembered of women gathering salt along the San Diego Bay and crushing it with a metate, which is a grinding stone. Uh, traditional Mexican food was prepared with New England food. The Christmas holidays included Mexican buñuelos, uh, which is bread rolls, and English plum duff. Abalone and clams were taken from the ocean at Point Loma, while deer might be hunt hunted in Mission Valley. Quail, coyotes, snakes, and rabbits also populated the valley north of Old Town. Life on the frontier could be hard and with few luxuries. This house reflects those times. The Machado, Machado Stewart House is typical of ordinary people who had achieved a level of comfort, if not wealth. Their lives would be brightened by Catholic customs with its celebrations and devotions. One bedroom had a tile floor and a, quote, small covered altar with religious figure, end quote. Other family possessions included Two pictures of saints ornamented with seashells hung on either side of the fireplace, uh, which was after 1850, a crucifix, a Stuart family Bible, glass bottles and tumblers, painted gourd drinking cup, and Jack Stewart's Chinese camphor wood chest. So for the people... Corporal Jose Manuel Machado um, lived from 1756 to 1852, was a sol soldado de cuera, uh, Spain's mounted dragoons who wore leather jackets. He married Maria Serafina Valdez, who lived from 1788 to 1861. Um, they married around 1805 and initially lived at the Presidio of San Diego. As some soldiers began to move out of the fort in 1822, Jose and Maria built this adobe house and raised 11 children. One, one daughter, Rosa Machado, born 1828 and died 1898 was born in the house and became a bridge between two cultures when she married New Englander John Jack Collins Stewart. 
who lived from 1812 to 1892 in 1845. Uh, he was a sailor and second mate on the Alert, a New England a New England hide and tallow ship. One of his shipmates was Richard Henry Dana, who mentioned Stuart in his book called Two Years Before the Mast. Stuart settled in San Diego around 1838. Stuart and Rosa had 11 children while he worked as a harbor pilot, rancher, and carpenter. His old shipmate, Richard Henry Dana, visited the Stuarts in 1859 and described this home as a once, uh, quote, one-story adobe house with its piazza and earthen floor, end quote. There are hidden stories of other people at La Casa de Machado y Stuart, including stories of the Kumaya people, Indian women doing the housework and helping in child care, including Carmel Cyril's, who helped raise the Stuart children and also had a farm in Mission Valley. One Indian woman who worked for the Machados was fondly remembered by one descendant as, quote, jolly woman strong as an ox, end quote. Kumaya would have, would harvest wood on Point Loma and sell it in town as firewood. So that is the information and story on the Casa de Machado y Stewart. And again, the date built was circa 1829. Uh, interpretive period is Mexican. Original structure restored in 1968. And this is uh, California Historical Landmark number 73. And I hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you want any more other information... You can go to www.parks.ca.gov backslash Old Town San Diego. And they'll have more information if you uh, want to look into it a little bit more. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for stopping by.